let's talk about death metal. Today I'm sharing you my not so surprising ranking of all death's albums. Death from Florida is a legendary death metal band, obviously, one of my utmost favorite and also one of the few bands with a flawless discography. I think every single album is a masterpiece for different reasons. Their evolution is just breathtaking. Mastermind lyricist, composer, lead rhythm guitar player and singer Chuck Schuldiner is a musical and innovative genius. He was creating new metal genres, settling the trends for more than a decade. Oh. We have to talk about him. He's the godfather of death metal. He helped creating uh, technical death metal too and uh, contributed to other genres such as progressive death metal, melodic death metal too. Uh, his music has uh, always uh, evolved with every single record, refining his sound. Uh, moreover, his lineup changed uh, a lot over the years but he was always well surrounded uh, to realize his visions uh, that said let's start with my number seven on the list which is the debut album called scream bloody gore hello my friend he's the cover of that, <laughs> that album yeah uh, for some people this is the best because it's a it was a game changer back in 1987. This is the first real death metal album. All the package is uh, that was there. This is brutal, fast, uh, heavy. The lyrics are gory, uh, really inspired by uh, horror movies since Chuck loved uh, horror movies. And the imagery is exactly what you will expect. Uh, from a death metal album these days. Uh, Chuck's vocals were so special, uh, it always sounded to me like it was a skeleton singing. Yeah, I don't know why, but it's always the, uh, the picture I have in my head when I hear Chuck's voice. My best tracks are Baptized in Blood with his transition riff in the middle of the song followed by that great solo. Zombie Ritual and Evil Dead. Um, by the way, the movies, uh, I like the movies a lot too of Evil Dead and the more recent series Ash vs. Evil Dead still with uh, Bruce Campbell. Okay, uh, coming at number 6 is uh, Leprosy, released in 1988, a year later. Scott Burns, a legendary producer, a uh, sound engineer from Murray Sound Studios, uh, was involved uh, in this one and it shows a lot. The production is more defined, uh, yet still raw and a step forward in every aspect. Uh, the voice of Chuck is uh, getting a little bit better and his guitar playing has improved a lot too. It's uh, already more melodic though in the soloing and uh, we can hear uh, some new elements in this music as well. It's more diverse but still very fast in general. We have the first trademark uh, tapping licks uh, that he will do uh, in numerous songs later. Uh, take a listen at uh, the song Born Dead. Uh, it's the album that combines uh, their more brutal side with uh, the dark melodies the, the most, I'd say. I think it's a big step up uh, from the debut, which was already a landmark. Um, favorite songs on this one uh, will be Pull the Plug, uh, Born Dead, and um, what's the other one? Uh, Left to Die, it's so good, but it's a flawless album, masterpiece. Uh, my next pick is a Spiritual Healing, released in 1990, and once again the production is way better on this one. This is louder, clearer, and larger. Uh, the sound is mass uh, more massive, uh, the album is very often an underdog in the discography, and but I think at the same time it's such a turning point for Death because it's not purely death metal anymore. 
this there's way more melodies uh, more um, more slow paced parts uh, still heavy uh, and that's uh, absolutely the beginning of the progressive and technical side of the band death I think also this is uh, on spiritual healing that Chuck finally uh, found his very own unique uh, sound as a lead guitar player when you hear one of his solos on this album and any album after uh, spiritual healing you know in three seconds it's him very recognizable uh, another thing uh, I've always witnessed on uh, this album is the fact that Chuck uh, started using his traditional formula to, to write most of his songs he will play some riffs like five six seven eight different riffs uh, while singing on or on top of most of them uh, and then we will have an instrumental break uh, with guitar solos to finally end with three four riffs from the first part usually the last ones uh, he played before the instrumental section I don't know if you have ever noticed that but uh, listen to uh, Symbolic and the Song of Perseverance and individual top patterns it's almost always the same uh, formula to uh, it's, it's always like that it's like verse 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 chorus instrumental section and then you will come back to two or three verse and then the final chorus uh, best cuts for me is uh, will be genetic reconstruction uh, the first song uh, living monstrosity and uh, my favorite is uh, called low life I'm following the same path with my next pick and it will be Human release in 1991 the best in the discography for a lot of people and I can fully understand why indeed it's a very unique album with Sean Reinhardt on uh, drums and Paul Masvidal on guitar they will form a uh, Sinek right after the recording of Human Sean wasn't even a metal drummer at the time uh, but a very skillful one and uh, there's a lot of jazz elements in his playing and he's just killing it uh, behind the kit uh, this time it's becoming way more technical for the most part the songwriting on ear it's absolutely stunning and will inspire a musician for decades to come absolutely it's still inspired uh, inspire uh, a lot of people right now favorite pieces here will be secret secret face uh, suicide machine and lack of comprehension the classic uh, coming on third place is the best record for most deaf fans it seems and it's called symbolic I have to admit this one was on second place almost all my life uh, but lately I realized I liked more the next pick and there's one main reason for that and it's called Zero Tolerance and Perennials Quest uh, two very good tracks uh, but they aren't as strong to me personally than everything they will have on the next two album uh, anyway this record which was released in 1993 is uh, purely fantastic uh, not, not 1993 it's 1995 uh, symbolic sorry about that mistake yeah sorry um, the songs are longer more progressive uh, the production is stellar uh, Gene Oglin is a is very creative on drums he's a fucking beast uh, Chuck is at the top of his game absolutely he's the riff masters and knows uh, how to make tempo changes to keep you always on your toes this album has a lot of dynamics and so many great melodies very difficult to choose my three favorite song but I'll go with without judgment um, the third song empty words and sacred serenity yeah it's art with this record because it's flawless except maybe the two songs i mentioned earlier but i know a lot of people like those songs for a different reason and i really like them just a little bit less uh, 
My second best death album is Individual Top Patterns. That one was released in 1993. Um, really like it because I dig every single song like almost equally. Uh, the songs are shorter, it's more in your face uh, than symbolic and the dynamics uh, I told you before on here is so great it's another uh, another uh, point in favor is the outstanding performance by Andy LaRock from King Diamond his solos are so memorable and complete uh, perfectly Chuck's solos uh, you have also Gino Glenn also on the drums uh, and I have another unpopular take <laughs> for this one Uh, I'll have the audacity to say that Gene Oglin's drumming ear is better and more creative than on Symbolic. I love it so much, man. One of my best drum album of all time. Never forget the work to on bass by Steve DiGiorgio. Uh, it's a piv pivotal uh, performance and... Um, performance in metal uh, even if he was already exceptional on uh, human finally Chuck is unbelievably unbelievably good uh, at every single turn uh, from the riffs to every uh, melody and every soul the production isn't as good as on symbolic uh, but it sounds uh, because it sounds muffled a little bit but uh, for my personal taste I truly love it anyway but I, I prefer the, the production on Symbolic my top three songs are some of the best songs ever created I think in the metal genre uh, it's called Overactive, Overactive Imagination that's the opener In Human Form the next song after and the best of the best for me trapped in the corner uh, with the duo phenomenal solos uh, with Andy and uh, Chuck it's unbelievable finally my favorite death album is by Elimination, the song of Perseverance this is the culmination of Chuck Schuldiner's uh, evolution and refinement as a musician Uh, the songwriting here is completely out of this world uh, there's no album on earth that sounds like this one every single detail is perfectly uh, perfectly in place to boost every riff every transition uh, this is astonishing man. the production is taking place again at Morris Sound Studio this time with Jim Morris one of the founder of the Morrison Studios with uh, his brother. Scott Burns was working uh, mostly there too before he was retiring. I think he was uh, reti he retired in uh, 1996, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> the quality of the production here is, is flawless. It's one of my favorite album and production of all time. Uh, talking about favorite of all time I have a statement to make here I think uh, Richard Christie's drumming here is in my top five performance ever he's so good man this is pure madness the creative the creativity uh, that he brought uh, to all the riff uh, he, he, he brought every single riff to the stratosphere I can say Chuck said he never asks for any adjustment on any drum parts on this recording because he thought it was always mind-blowing what Richard will come up with and I can't agree more uh, the voice of Chuck is at his best also he screams even some high-pitched notes and what can we say about that painkiller cover uh, when you decide to attack one of the best tracks ever written and you succeed to make it even better in some of the parts it's totally crazy you have to be man 
What are you thinking? I don't know. Uh, he doesn't have a mind like uh, regular people, I'd, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can talk for, for an hour and more about this album, but it's not the purpose uh, here. So uh, let's just have my favorite three songs on this album. It's a masterpiece from top to bottom, but I will say today is maybe the second one by The Pain, Spirit Crusher for sure, and I will go with a moment of clarity as my third. And I have to underline also Voice of the Soul, that acoustic uh, Evan Sand masterpiece. It's so soothing when you want to just be relaxed, calm, and maybe take a nap. Put that song on repeat, man. It's so efficient. Uh, if you're still here, I guess you're probably as passionate as I am by this magnificent band uh, called Death and Chuck Schuldener's Legacy. Hello, Chuck. That's him. Yeah. You can see. I like this, this statue. Uh, rest in peace and death, uh, my legend. And uh, we will keep talking about how great you were as a songwriter, as a guitar player, a singer, a lyricist, and as a person. Um, if you feel like it, uh, subscribe and more importantly, keep the metal flame burning, my friend. Rest in peace, Jack. Cheers!